the second Tuesday of the month brings a visit from the creator of the most heavily trafficked barbecue and grilling website ever. I am, of course, talking about Meathead. Hey, hey, Meathead. Oh, hold on a second. I, wait, do I have you? Say something. I don't have you. Where are you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. How's that? Hey, there we go. What happened? You how's have yourself that? on how's that? You have yourself on mute? Uh-oh. Yeah, I <laughs> muted the uh, Skype rather than uh, Facebook. All right. Well, uh, you got Facebook <laughs> muted now, which is good. Obviously, you have you unmuted on Skype, so now we can hear you. And we are joined <laughs> by Meathead from Amazing Ribs. Dot com. So, Hello, Centralites. Please, uh, what are you consuming tonight? I mean, you might want to break out a bit of the bubbly here in a second. Um, it's called bravado. Oh, uh, that's appropriate for you. Oh, for you um, too. You are very bravado esque. Um, it's a uh, a Chilean Ooh. when red I blend. when I was drinking wine or liquor in general. Chileans were some of my favorite wines. Yeah, you're you're off the sauce now, aren't oh, you? Oh yeah, I'm all, almost two years Labor Day. Oh my goodness! Yes, well, you know, you have an event, and <laughs> you figure you, some things are a little bit more important than others. Meathead. Uh -oh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Meathead. Hey, stand by. Stand Wait. By. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask you. Uh, you know, I always uh, join in uh, via Facebook. Yeah. But um, I'm aware that you also are on YouTube, and uh, well, I don't know how these whole things work. Is, is is do you prefer that uh, people listen, join in on YouTube to Facebook? I prefer people listen however they want, whether it's mm -hmm. through the audio only stream, whether they like the Facebook interface, or whether they like the YouTube live interface. What I can tell you is this: the biggest delineator. While I probably get more views on Facebook just because people are much more familiar on a day to day, get on Facebook yeah. and check stuff. YouTube's chat interface is way easier for me to, in fact i can pop it out and place it right on the screen so i can kind of follow along here and there i learned long ago that if you start to follow the chat you get lost guests stop answering questions and you're not paying attention you look like a schmuck but mm. it does allow me to monitor the chat a little bit easier so i mean if it, if i was a fan of mine i would probably be taking place are watching on YouTube because then I could interact on the chat there. Or maybe I could be seen with my comments by the host. So it's totally up to however is most comfortable for the watcher, listener, fan. Um, if you want to take part or you want to have a better chance of me seeing something, I would suggest going over to YouTube. Okay. In depth answer? Too much? Yeah, no, just, uh, <laughs> hey, you got a hot show tonight. This is a really interesting show tonight. I know. We got Meathead and Dr. Howard Conyers. Yeah, Conyers is uh, going to be an interesting uh, oh, discussion. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I uh, I have some interesting thoughts about that, too. I'm looking forward to hearing him. All right, so here we go. Stand by for this, Meathead, because I don't know if you are in the loop on this or not. Few people are, but of course. I have my fingers firmly on the pulse of what's happening here in the live fire world. Mm -hmm. And I have an exclusive announcement that involves you, Meathead. Are you ready? Uh, uh, the, 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 they finally caught up with me. I'm oh, going. Hold on. A Barbecue <laughs> Central Show exclusive news update. This is Greg Rampey reporting from the breaking news desk here in Cleveland, Ohio. And I have from confirmed sources, these are 100% reliable information I'm about to pass along to you, Meathead. Oh, God, they're going to come arrest me. That the creator of AmazingRibs.com indeed has made the final nine nominees for the Barbecue Hall of Fame. No shit. No shit. Meathead is on the final night. Now, of course... This is what I would call the short list slash rough draft. This, these nine people, you are one of those nine, Meathead, will now be disseminated across the current Barbecue Hall of Famers. They will then vote on, I guess they pick three people or so, and whoever gets the most votes, the, the three with the most votes will make up the 2019 Barbecue Hall of Fame class. So you have oh, a shit. one in nine. 
Are my odds right? You have a one in nine shot of making it into the Barbecue Hall of Fame this year. Well, isn't that fascinating? How about you? Did you make it? Didn't make it. Oh, man. I'm not going in without you. No, let's not make any rash decisions here on tape that we would have to pull back and say, well, Mita, you got in, but you said you wouldn't. Now, well, you well, know, it would be you know, kind of fun if if you got in and then you told them, you know what, I'm going to pass. <laughs> I have a feeling you probably won't pass. <laughs> I'm taking Rempy with me. Who else is on the list? Well, I'm glad you asked. In no particular order, I give you the remaining eight potential nominees or, or class of 2019 for Barbecue Hall of Fame. Some guy named Aaron Franklin is on I've this heard list. of him. Meathead is on this list. Desiree Robinson is on this list. Familiar? Oh, yes. All right. Wayne Monk is on this list. Nice, nice. John Big Daddy Bishop is on this list. Familiar? Yeah, All I right. know the name. C.B. Stubblefield is also on the list. Mike, that's Stubbs, by the way, for people that don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, uh, Oh, you know what? Let me back up. Aaron Franklin, Franklin Barbecue. I don't want to just assume everybody knows. Meathead, AmazingRibs.com. Oh, yeah, sure. Desiree Robinson is uh, not originally a founder, but now a, a owner. Cozy, Cozy Corner, Corner Barbecue Restaurant, Memphis, Tennessee. What uh, a gracious, beautiful lady with a great restaurant, and nobody cooks Cornish hen better than she. Wayne Monk is uh, the founder of Lexington Barbecue in Lexington, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. John Big Daddy Bishop is the founder of Dreamland Barbecue in Alabama. Mm -hmm. C.B. Stubblefield, the Stubbs, uh, he was, uh, I think they had uh, some restaurants, but obviously you see Stubbs barbecue sauces, rubs, and marinades all over grocery stores nationwide. Uh, Michael Ray Higgins which is a founding partner of j &R Manufacturing, and that's the company that makes uh, j &R Oiler Pits. Mm -hmm. He's also in. Number eight is Jim Quisenberry. Uh, from my best internet research, he was a competitor, early 80s, uh, really involved in getting Memphis and May off the ground back then when it was just a event held under a single tent, not like what's going to transpire here this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, uh, and you would know, James Lemons, which is Lem's Barbecue in Chicago. Lem's Barbecue. So those You're are your uh, eight potential uh, Barbecue Hall of Fame. Well, those are, that's the, and, so here's how it works. I might note three African Americans. Uh, uh, actually, I believe we have four. Uh, oh. Jim, we have uh, Lem's, we have Stubb. C.B. Stubblefield, uh, John Bishop, and Desiree Robinson. They okay. are all African-American. Absolutely. So um, for the folks that don't know, there is a nomination period. Then that window closes. Then the names are submitted um, to some type of a panel, I guess. And then however many people are nominated, it's worked down into this final nine list, which is then sent out to the current Barbecue Hall of Famers, and then they are voted on. And then the top three will go ahead and be your class of 2019. So I would imagine in a month well, or that's two. A tough, that's a tough panel. I mean, there's some people that have been around. Desiree, for sure. Oh, yeah. Lem is a really interesting character. I mean, he's a classic old Southside Chicago. But it's, I don't know, it's interesting. Both Desiree and Lem use aquarium smokers. Correct. Which is a smoker that is sort of a Chicago-style smoker. Yep. Um. Uh, Lem's, you know, just one location. Um, well, uh, that's not it's, true. It's, that's not true, Meathead. Um, in the beginning, uh, Lem's barbecue was actually founded by his two brothers, Bruce and Miles. Right. And then in 1968, the second location, which I believe is the one that's more well known now, is the one mm -hmm. that you're uh, right. You're the, right. The James actually opened up. So, uh, two locations. But yeah, I mean, Lem's barbecue is a uh, is a staple in Chicago. Well, it it it's the, oh, the it's, it's just like the, the grand, quintessential the grand old granddad of the um, old style southern south 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 side barbecue. The, this the aquarium smoker for people who've never seen it is basically an open pit like you used to dig down in the delta. 
um, in the ground, but the city of Chicago wouldn't let you do that. So they built it with um, brick and then surrounded it with stainless steel. Yep. And in order to capture the smoke and send it up a chimney to meet the pollution laws, they put um, plexiglass sides on it. So it looks like a giant aquarium. Right. But basically, they throw logs in there. They burn logs. They sit there all day long with a hose in their hands. Um, it's just a really old-fashioned pit, and uh, it's a tough way to make barbecue, and it's all wood-fired. It's really a uh, fun barbecue. And Lem's known for chicken and uh, rib tips and, and the hot links, I guess, mm-hmm. is what they're really known for. So. Yeah, all yeah. Right. You're, boy, you know your Chicago barbecue history. That's right. I try and get up on these barbecue Hall of Famers or potential barbecue Hall of Famers since the I'll list is now I bet you learned so. that from Harry Carey. Uh, hey, everybody! Um, so are you... Uh, you have a 33% chance of going in, so uh, certainly those odds are better than 5 or 6%. Well, how do they pick? Do they pick by I, vote? I don't Yes, all of the bu- current Barbecue Hall of Famers will now vote, I want this guy to go in or I want this lady to go in, and then the three that have the most votes will make up the class of 2019, which I would assume we would hear about in the next month or two. So the public doesn't vote. No, no, only the current uh, makeup of the Barbecue Hall of Fame votes. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I don't think I'll make it in that crowd. There's some pretty impressive people. I mean, Aaron Franklin is universally regarded. Uh, um, Desiree uh, absolutely deserved a a grand dame. Lem's a a very historical person. Mm -hmm. Um, Stubbs, uh, another one. Yes. Um, uh, who else? I mean, there's some really good people on that list. I don't think you'll see me in the Hall of Fame this year. Well, the other thing that I thought was interesting is I peruse this top nine list, and I don't have the one from last year right in front of me. I should have done a compare and contrast, but I don't believe anybody that was on the top nine list last year it, that didn't make it in is also a return to a top nine in 2019, oh, really? believe it or not. This is a fresh nine. That's so odd. I would I would hate to hazard a guess that if you don't get in, we might not see some of these same names a year from now. That's odd. Yes, not a, not a one, believe it or not. So we'll see. All right, so that's the great news for my pal Meathead. Thanks I wanted the, to share that with you. That's right. I'll drink to that. Go home uh, or go home. You're already home. Uh, make sure you tell your wife after that. Maybe get a <laughs> little honored. extra slice of pie tonight. You never know. Um, I'm honored. I thank I thank the uh, nominating committee. Uh, it's an honor just to be considered. Boy, to have my name in that crowd, wow. That's pretty neat. Pretty impressive. No doubt. Uh, by the way, I would just like to say that I am supremely disappointed, and I'm trying to figure out if I need to be disappointed at the Centralites or if whoever's in charge of this whole nomination thing got wind that I was making a movement to get John Marcus in on the final nine list. But no John Marcus. <laughs> I can't believe yeah. it. I can't believe it. Yeah. Anyway, John, somebody John should be. Well, it just goes to show that there's some plenty uh, there's plenty of good people out there for the future. All right, so here we go. It is National Barbecue Month obviously. We knew that. It is also National Hamburger Month. Did you know it was National Hamburger Month, Mita? I did. Yes. I, uh, I'm, I'm eating as much of either as I can. All right, so let's talk quickly about hamburgers as we draw a close to that first segment. Best burger tips and tricks and ways of, of making, not necessarily what you think is best, because we'll get into that here in a second. That's its own question. But best burger tips and tricks. Um, minimum of six ounces. Grind it yourself. Um 20% minimum fat, and if you want to push it up to 30, you oh. will not regret it. Mm-hmm. Um, do not salt the meat until the last possible minute. Um, you'll just make it into a, um, a golf ball. The last possible uh, you, minute before you put it on the cooker? You just sprinkle the salt on the exterior just before you cook it. All right. Do not mix salt into the interior. We've got some really good pictures on the site about what happens. And our good friend Kenji Lopez Alt does a fun demonstration where he makes two meatballs, one that's been salted inside and one that hasn't, and throws them against the wall. And the one that has been salted on the inside bounces off the wall. Really? And the one that has not um, splatters into a million pieces. Huh. It's tender. 
It, it's the nominating committee meathead. Take the call. <laughs> no. Put it on the air right now. Hey, don't people know not to call you between 914 <laughs> and 945? What the I hell is going on? That's right. Is that a landline? Yeah, a landline. Jeez. You I, are. Still, I still work with a landline. You are a CEO of something. Look at you with a landline. How? And by the way, yeah. um, my Skype screen is frozen. Do you know how to refresh it? I don't see your refresh button. Um, I don't, but you are not frozen on my end, so I don't want to sit here and say it doesn't matter, but everybody can see you on our side. On, oh, wait. Are you there? Oh, look what he did. He jinxed it. Son of a gun. Get that big step out of here. Well, look what you did. All right, now I got to close that and get Meathead back here. As we're talking about burgers, I didn't have any idea that you weren't supposed to salt the burger until the very last second. Or I guess what I didn't know was that if you put salt in the burger meat and then you threw it up against the wall, it would bounce back. I mean, that's it. In a meatball, don't you want a little bounce back or do you not do you not want a a bounce back? I don't know. We'll have to ask Meathead here in a second. Hopefully we're just going to reconnect here quickly. As you can see me in all various forms and fashions. Oh, dear. Says he's not there, but of course he's there. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're back at it. Now, there I was go. just uh, talking to myself as far as that whole uh, <laughs> meat meatball thing about if you salt it, it'll bounce back off the wall. I mean, do you want a little uh, toothiness to a, a meatball, or do you not want it to be like that? I think that? you want it tender, and I think you want lots of gaps in there so when the fat melts, they fill the gaps. Okay. Uh, best burgers, in your opinion, are they mostly... Thick or are they mostly thin and crispy? Oh, um, minimum of six ounces. Yeah, for me, me, minimum right. six ounces, maximum of eight ounces. My favorite burger here in the Chicago area is made uh, at a place called Burger Antics, and it's nine ounces. And that's my only complaint. It's a little too much for me to eat, but um, and it's done on a griddle, not a grill. I prefer it on a grill. I like the open flame flavor. Um, and flip, 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 so it gets nice and dark and brown on the outside. I do like a uh, diner burger, you know, which is a smash burger. Um, no problems with those. Love them crispy edges. Uh, I've, I've written extensively on AmazingRibs.com about burger technique and concepts and where to put the, um, uh, the toppings. I actually prefer most of them um, uh, on the bottom. Me too. Um, you know, you have this issue here. You only have two fingers underneath and lots of fingers on top. Right. So you have to build it, um, and you have to engineer it so it doesn't fall apart. Last question before we get to break, Meathead. Uh, with the continued onslaught or popularity of the Impossible Burger or the Beyond Burger, are you a fan of, of either one of those, the uh, plant-based um, proteins? There's a very nice um, uh, Irish restaurant near me. Can you hear me? We my picture froze again. Yes, I can. All right. I, I there was a message on my screen said we had a bad connection, so one of us got weak internet. If I, uh, <clears throat> I hope I don't lose you, but I, my screen is frozen. You're fine. Um, there's a really good Irish restaurant makes good burgers, and they serve the Impossible Burger version one. I guess there's a version two out that they say is better. I went in there and I had it and I thought it was respectable. And then I ordered it naked. Yes. Um, because, you know, when you start putting the mayonnaise and ketchup blend and right. um, all the lettuce and tomatoes, you know, that this is my problem with um, a lot of fast food burgers. And that goes for in and out and uh, all the other chic quarter quarter pounders and stuff that everybody raves about. You can't taste the meat. It's just all the toppings. It's all the seasonings. I like the combination, but you just can't taste the meat. Um, uh, I had it without anything, and I thought it was dull and boring, and there mm -hmm. is no way mm. on earth I would mistake it for beef. 
But is that what's trying to happen? Do you think that they are trying to pass it off as beef or of are they or are they trying to pass it off as an alternative to beef? Both. Both. They want it to taste like they want by, with every ounce of their being for people to sit down and say, I got two burgers here. One's beef, one's not. And I can't tell the difference. That's what they want. Hmm. Um, and now, goodness knows, I don't know why vegans want to eat something that tastes like an animal. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously it's because animals taste good. But this could also offer an opportunity for folks who are constantly hearing uh, Americans are eating too much red meat to have something that would be as uh, almost akin to a red meat option, except it's not. Now, I'm not saying it's more or less healthy than anything else, oh, that, but is it uh, red meat? It's not. It's an option. It gives you the burger fulfillment. But it's yeah, not the burger. That's clearly the motivation. Uh, there is some evidence that the em environmental impact is lesser. Um, but uh, let, don't fool yourself. It is not healthier in right. the sense that the number of calories, right. the amount of sugar, um, all of those. When you do the analysis, it is not a lot different than a regular burger uh, in, in both calories and grams of fat and all that stuff. But the environmental impact is lesser than the environmental impact of steers. We're talking with Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. We will get back to him in just one second where we will get to your Facebook and Instagram messages and questions. I'll talk to you quickly about Southside Market and Barbecue. 